video we're going to show a few examples of linear system equations. The purpose of doing this is so that we can have a real sense of why linear system of equations, vectors, matrices, and in general linear algebra, why that is a useful thing for engineers to know. Specifically, we're going to look at balancing a chemical reaction by utilizing a linear system of equations technique, and we'll do the same thing for modeling uh, fluid flow. So let's get started. Um, let's look at this following chemical reaction um, uh, where essentially we are looking at uh, propane. So the whole point of balancing a chemical reaction is to find the factors x1, x2, x3, and x4 such that when I multiply all these molecules by that factor and I count the total number of atoms, for example, say carbon, on the left-hand side and the total number of carbon on the right-hand side, right? The total number of carbon on the right-hand right side will be x3 times 1, which is because this molecule only has one carbon, right? So when I find these factors x1, x2, x3, said so I multiply, multiply all the molecules, then the, the total number count of each item type will be the same on the left-hand side of the reaction versus on the right-hand side of the reaction. So here, uh, all we have to do is um, start enumerating all the elements. So for example, we can start with carbon. I'll put C for carbon. And we can write that, uh, for example, here we have three carbon on this molecule, right? So we can write that three times x1, whatever x1 will be in the end, we'll just store that value as a variable for now. Three times x1 has to be equal to x3 times carbon, right? So uh, simply x3. So we can see how we wrote the requirement that the number of carbon atoms on the left-hand side of the reaction should be equal to the number of carbon atoms in the right-hand side of the reaction. We wrote this as a simple equation. So repeat this for hydrogen, and if you repeat the same arguments, you'll find out that 8x1, right, because we have 8 hydrogen atoms here, should be equal to 2x4. The reason here is because we have two hydrogen atoms there in that molecule. Let's do this also for oxygen. So we have oxygen here. We have that uh, 2x2, right, will be equal to, now we have oxygen on this, both these molecules right here. We have uh, uh, 2x3 plus just x4, right? This oxygen atom here appears by itself. So let's write that down. 2x3 plus x4. So as you can see here, we have four equations, I mean, sorry, four unknowns, right? So x1, x2, x3, and x4 are the unknowns. But we only have three equations because we only have carbon atom, hydrogen atoms, and oxygen atoms in this particular reaction. So we have a system of three equ equations and four unknowns. So as, as you know, this doesn't uniquely define um, this reaction. So we are forced to add a fourth equation here. By And we can do that by selecting any of these coefficients, x1, x2, x3, or x4, to be anything we want. So I'll do the simplest thing, which is to require that x1 be equal to 1. Right. So one quick trick is that we can rewrite this whole reaction here by simply... Um, shifting all the variables to one side and, and writing it in a more standardized format. So for example, what I'll do here is I'll just write 3x1 plus 0 times x2 minus x3 plus 0 times x4 should be equal to 0 on the other side. Well, I'll do the same thing with the next equation, which will mean 8x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 should be equal to minus 2x4. That should also be equal to 0. We have here that 0x1 plus 2x2 minus 2x3 minus x4 should also be equal to 0. And finally, we have that 
x1 x1 plus 0 x2 plus 0 x3 plus 0 x4 should also be equal to 0. So this is the same thing. We're writing the same exact thing, but we're just writing it in a more standardized fashion. So we can summarize this, this whole system of linear equations that came out naturally from trying to balance a chemical reaction as a system of four equations and four unknowns. The purpose of this next section of the course will be to, to, to start viewing this linear system of equations as a matrix times a vector equals another vector, right? And all we have done here is we have taken the, the set of unknowns, which are x1, x2, and x3, and x4, and we just made a list. We call that list a vector. And the coefficients of that those the set of linear equations are given here. Of course, I changed the order. I put x1 as the first as the first equation. Right? So we call this coefficients, the set of coefficients for the linear equation, we call this this matrix here. We call the the vector, the the, the list of unknowns, we call this a vector. And on the other side we had 1 and 0, 0, 0, and we call that as well as, as uh, a vector as well. So here is how you can view a balancing a chemical reaction as a linear system equation or solving a matrix vector kind of equation. Linear system equations arise naturally in many areas of science and engineering. Here is another one, which is in modeling blood flow after the loss of an artery. So this is a figure taken from uh, Professor Richard Price's uh, laboratory uh, from, from a paper coming out of his laboratory at the University of Virginia. And we're looking to see what happens to the flow uh, and resistance uh, as certain arteries are rearranged. So, of course, uh, loss of blood flow causes uh, changes in collateral vessels. So it's important to find this out. And here is an actual image of, of, of a mouse model where you can actually see uh, this different uh, uh, arteries and vessels, right? And the whole uh, business here is to understand uh, what is the, what's the difference when, when uh, these, these arteries uh, are not present versus when they are present. So what we do is we come up with a mathematical model and we solve for the model when it is present and when it's not present. So uh, first step is to go from uh, this image to a sort of a diagram of uh, uh, the, this vessel distribution here. And you can see that a simple diagram can be written um, as is shown here down at the bottom. Right, we have uh, f uh, blood coming in at the top here and we have a, a sort of a wiring diagram describing what happens to blood flow as, as it grows through this, this uh, uh, set of pipes or arteries. And we can utilize certain basic laws of fluid flow, uh, which are very similar to the laws of how circuits behave. Uh, right? So we have flow of blood coming in at the top, and we have uh, resistances. Uh, which uh, allow us to, to essentially compute pressure and flow. Uh, and so this, these three quantities are, are mixed together um, and dictate the behavior of fluid flow through these pipes. So the known variables are listed here. We have the known uh, uh, fluid flow input, in, let's say in liters per second, have resistance one, resistance two, resistance three, corresponding to the resistance of these individual channels over here. And uh, the unknowns are Q1, Q2, and so on, which represent the flow to the different portions of uh, this loop, right? Or these loops uh, that constitute uh, the, the blood flow diagram. So the question is, can we, from the set of known variables, can we recover the set of unknowns? And the basic laws of, 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 of fluid flow dictate that we can use uh, two tricks, right? The fact that mass coming into a particular node 
should be equal to the total mass coming out of a particular node, as well as that the pressure around a particular loop should be uh, preserved. So these two tricks we can use to come up with a linear system, uh, system, a system of equations. So let's let's look at fluid flow conservation. So if we look at fluid flow coming in, this should be equal to Q0 should be equal to, oops, uh, Q0 should be equal to Q1 plus Q2, right? Or in other words, Q0 minus Q1 and Q2 should be equal to zero, right? We repeat uh, the same the same analysis for each node in this graph. So here's a, a, another node. So Q1 should be equal to Q3 plus Q5, or written another way, it appears over here. Repeat for this node and for this node, and you get this equations three and equation four over here. So you can use that trick to come up with a set of uh, four equations, but we have seven unknowns, so that doesn't totally satisfy uh, what we need. So we can also do loop analysis, right? So we have we can identify this loop here on top, we can identify this loop here on the bottom, and this loop here on the bottom as well. And the pressure, which is the resistance times the flow, should be equal uh, uh, for all these loops, right? So we have, uh, let's look at just one of them. For example, we have uh, R1, Q1, right? Should be equal to uh, the sum of all of these uh, ones over here, right? So of course, you also have to, to, uh, to, to choose the direction. So if you add all of these together, minus R1, Q1, minus R3, Q3, right, which these two are in this particular direction, this particular direction, plus the uh, the pressure for the other parts of the loop, that should be equal to zero. And you repeat the same analysis for the other loops, and you will have that uh, these other two equations, which completes the business uh, of us trying to find seven equations for seven unknowns, right? Once we have these equations, then we can solve um, um, for for different parameters. We can find the different geometries, we can disconnect a loop, we can disconnect some nodes to create a different kind of set of loops, and we can um, um, figure out for things important things like the resistance in the uh, in the in this particular path of uh, flow increases once you ligate these these other nodes. So um, these are just two examples, and there are many more of what we call a linear system of equations. Right? In general, we write a linear system of equations as here's equation number one, equation number two, equation number three, and so on, where we use a one one for the coefficients of the first variable a12 for coefficients in the second variable and so on, and, and so on right a21 is the coefficient of the first variable for the second equation and so on so we have a system of linear equations right a set of linear equations and in linear algebra we write the set of linear equations as a matrix times a vector of unknowns equals another vector of knowns right so we simply write a which is our matrix A times the vector X should be equal to B, right? So we write uh, in bold face, vectors we write in bold face um, uh, for, uh, for, for vectors, right? So sometimes when I'm writing on, on my, uh, my tablet, I may write a vector with a bar on top just because I have a hard time writing bold face um, and, and it's a pretty much standard notation. So the last thing I'll say is that uh, uh, this type of trick, uh, this type of technique, where you describe a system in terms of a set of linear equations is used all over in, in engineering science. Um, uh, particular examples in, uh, in um, biomedical engineering include biomechanics, uh, uh, modeling blood flow through vessels, as we just talked about, uh, uh, bioelectrics, mass transport, uh, uh, electric circuits, and many others.